All right, welcome back to another Dolphin Computer Service video. Today we're going to be looking at yet another common interface device that we use with our computers and even our tablets or phones and <clears throat> other things we use at work or school or <clears throat> in our personal lives to for whether it's for pleasure or for other related things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the fabulous keyboard. So there are many types of keyboards I'm going to be using and we're going to be talking about computer mice by the way not just keyboards since they kind of go hand in hand and you could usually buy them as a combo set when you purchase them from your favorite you know electronic store or department store or you know anywhere that basically sells anything computer related um so i'm going to be using this example here uh from popular mechanics and another one from over here cdw um you don't have to exactly, you know, like go buy this exact guide. I will leave both these uh, websites in the description below if you'd like to further read them. But, you know, I'm using them as, um, as a template for you guys because it's easier to show it to you instead of having multiple pictures up. So if we scroll down here, you know, this is kind of what we're going to be talking about in terms of keyboards here. You know, you have the different types, whether... It's different in connectivity, which is how it connects to your computer. You know, how many keys it has. Is it, you know, the standard one? Um, or is it the 108 key with the numeric keypad on the side? We're only going to be talking about the QWERTY keyboard, which is, you know, all you see here where the first row starts with Q-W-E-R-T-Y. There are different kinds of keyboards, but, you know, they're barely used or they're so niche that I decided it wasn't really worth including in here. So I'm only going to include the basic stuff of the keyboard. So first of all, you know, each keyboard is different. You know, you have a what we call a mechanical keyboard, which, you know, I actually have one here. You can hear it really quick. You know, there's an actual mechanism that, you know, makes a clicking sound and it has its purpose. You know, some people just like it because of the way it feels. A lot of gamers use it because of their response rates and, you know, also the way they feel then we have the the more travel focused ones like the one you see here this low profile one there's even some that will roll up into like a scroll that you could just throw in your book bag it takes up very little space and then you have the ergonomic ones this is one here's another ergonomic one this one i've used personally from microsoft it's actually very good um definitely worth it we'll also talk about the different types of connectivity you know if it uses usb bluetooth it has its own wireless dongle over it's wired and then again you have the the compact one over here meant for you know traveling as well so the two types are the mechanical and the membrane uh if you usually buy a 20 dollars one it is most probably a membrane one um most laptops are membrane as well because they tend to resist dust and dirt a little better so um the mechanical one is mainly for it stays in one place and it never moves um it's always going to be with that computer until either the computer dies or the keyboard dies or both it's always a possibility keyboards are a wear item because you know you have moving parts and you are tapping on them they do get dirty as well because you know your fingers have oil and grease on them that your body naturally produces you may have touched something oily or sticky or you know you may have eaten before and didn't wash your hands so cleaning your keyboard and your mouse in particular as well is always something that you should be doing usually a alcohol wipe or a clorox wipe you know is more than enough to do it just make sure it's not too soaked so you know give it a like you know wring it out a little bit and then wipe it over and then let it dry before you touch it to make sure all the germs are clean you could also use a a um, compressed air uh, can to blow off any of the large debris and they also have dusters too that you could buy to get in between all those little nooks and crannies so then we have wired and wireless there's many different types of keyboards um, the main one you're going to get is USB, the wired one, which is the cheapest usually. Uh, there's another one that uses a what we call a PS2 connector. Uh, you're rarely going to see that. Maybe you'll still see it on like a server or something, but we've moved on as a society from that. So now we're basically using USB. Some of them use USB but are wireless where they have a little dongle that you plug into a USB port and it uses that so you can move around with it. And then there's some that use Bluetooth. A lot of the Bluetooth ones are capable of being used not only on computer, tablet, 
Uh, some of them, like Logitech makes one that it has a little slot where you could actually put your device that's propped up in a way where it holds it for you while you do your typing. It's really nice. That one's a more, again, travel-focused one, but those options do exist out there. Uh, for other considerations, again, like we have custom, some of them have customizable keys where you could, when, when you press that key, you it'll tell the computer like, oh, open up my mail app, open up uh, the web browser, stop the music. Some of those, key, most keyboards a lot have that built in already where you can, you know, raise and lower the volume or the brightness of your computer. You can play and fast forward or mute your your music or videos that you're playing. Uh, those are really nice. Not all keyboards have it, but nowadays you, you see most of them do have it, even on the lower end ones. Or they'll at least have it as part of your function keys, you know, the ones that say F1, F2, where you have to press an FN key, then that key in order for it to work. Um, another thing you have to consider is, is it compatible with your operating system? So if you're using Windows 1, make sure that your computer keyboard has one for Windows and for Mac. Make sure it gets them for Mac. They'll usually work on each other, but a lot of the functions may not be there if you try and cross one with the other. And a lot of keyboards now work on both anyway. So it's not something you have to be too, too worried about. So we're going to start with the mechanical one. This is your basic. This is, I guess, well, not basic mechanical keyboard, but this is what your basic keyboard looks like. It has, you know, it's just your arrows, your keywordy. And that's it. You know, you have your basic function keys on top. Like I said here, you see you have the, your function keys, and then you have you know like your fast forward, pause, play, reverse, volume, and brightness. Another thing that um some computer, some keyboards do is that they have like a backlight. Um, what that basically means, if you ever look at your laptop, you see light shines through it. Uh, those are really good, and I always recommend getting one, especially if you're working in you know areas that are either dark or not very well lit or you know you're kind of far away from your screen and the screen won't shine on your keyboard um a lot of laptops have them not every laptop but a lot of laptops do have them it's a very it's a very worth it you know thing to have because you some especially for one that's a keyboard that's on the go you never know when you're going to be in an area that's kind of dark and you need you know the light to see so then here's an example of an RGB one for gaming here. Um, if you get an RGB one, a lot of these are customizable where, you know, they can do certain things. It'll act like a backlight as well. In fact, I have a mechanical key cron with the numpad on the side specifically for use in the Mac. Um, again, that one is a really fancy one where it works both wired and wireless and you can use it on Windows or Mac or iOS or Android. And uh, it works off of Bluetooth. So it's truly wireless. You don't have to worry about keeping or losing a dongle. And it works off of um, an internal battery. That's another thing. Some, some wireless keyboards, you could either charge them with an internal battery or you replace the batteries with a, you know, double A or triple A, something like that. So again, this is, you know, your fancier, you know, gaming laptop it has you know the rgb again you see the function keys here to do certain things uh the gaming ones are usually programmable this one has like a little palm rest for your palms when you're when you're playing a game or typing um another thing is these palm rests you could buy them separately as well like you know a little foam one those are important especially if you are typing for a long period of time a good keyboard as you see here, some of these keyboards, you know, go for almost 200 bucks. Um, a good keyboard goes a long way. And especially if you're typing a whole lot, this is one of these ergonomic ones are amazing. As you see, this one has the dedicated keys with a program where you could tell it what to do. Dedicated volume, play and pause, the numpad, you know. If So getting a good keyboard for will will save you a lot and it'll even help you you know with your health you know uh, help alleviate from you developing carpal tunnel and all that your hands and fingers aren't as sore you know your arms aren't tired and hurting from typing after a long day um usually i recommend that if that can if that keyboard is just going to stay with that one computer get it wired save yourself some money you know, there's no sense in having, you know, paying a little extra for something you may never need. So then here we have the low profile one. Again, you have the, this one's more meant for, you know, 
if you're walking around in an office where you can, you know, like control your slideshow, you know, move around, you know, pressing, you know, or typing something on a big screen. This is something that that's more dedicated for. Um, again, you know, you have your numpad. I always like a numpad over just, you know, like the, what they call the short layout where this is missing because, um, especially if you're like on an Excel spreadsheet or you're a cashier and you're typing in, or even teachers that grade a lot and they're inputting a lot of numbers. Basically, if you're inputting a lot of numbers, the numpad makes everything a breeze. And once you get used to it, it's a really short learning curve. You won't even have to look at the keyboard. You'll just be typing away and your brain will automatically know exactly where to press. So then here, again, you know, this is more a better example of the backlight. Um, this one, again, has multiple colors, but you could just get one that's just a white backlight and it'll be perfect for, you know, in dark places or areas with no light. Again, this is another example of an ergonomic keyboard where you could set it in a way that's comfortable for you. I've never tried this one. Again, I've only tried this one and this one is amazing. I would totally recommend it. By the way, not sponsored or, you know, supported by anyone. This is just my recommendation. So, you know, er ergonomic keyboards are something that I would definitely recommend if you're going to be typing all day for long extended periods of time. And then this is your portable one. This one actually, I believe, has a backlight, as you can see up here. Um, this one also works on Bluetooth. So it's so instead of having, you know, a separate dongle to carry around, you just go into your devices settings and go to Bluetooth. Usually these don't have a numpad and the keyboards are and the keys are a lot smaller because, again, you're more focused on, you know, being able to travel it around with you everywhere you go. And um, again, Microsoft makes their own. This is, you know, an affordable one, you know, they're, again, 40 bucks. You don't have to spend a lot, but I recommend that if you're the kind of person that is, you know, constantly on it all day for long extended periods of time that uh, getting yourself a good one because it will travel a it will help you in the long run. So now we're going to go to the mice here. So again, the keyboards and mice are somewhat similar in terms of their connectivity and, you know, what to do. Again, your cheapest one is your wired one like this one over here. Um but you could also get the dongle one where it comes with a little USB dongle that plugs in. Or you can get them in Bluetooth. That'll, you again, you go into your device's settings and, you know, you connect to it and you have your mouse via Bluetooth. Um, with the way these are worked, they either have a rubber ball at the bottom, which I totally recommend you avoid at all costs. Because um, as a society, we have moved on to a better way of doing that which is we actually shine a laser down to your desk or whatever you're on and i always recommend the mouse pad a mouse pad actually helps you out it's not just some fancy device that takes up more space in your desk it actually helps improve especially for gamers you know it helps improve your accuracy if you're typing a lot it helps you know moving across uh, the screen with less effort. It's definitely something worthwhile getting. So again, some of these even come with a keyboard. You know, it'll come in one dongle, which is great. You know, if you just want a basic mouse and keyboard to get you going. Um, again, these can use U these mainly use USB when they're wired or have the wireless dongle. You can get these in PS2, but again, we've moved on as a society. So this is your basic one. You have your center button for the scroll wheel. Then you have your left click and your right click. So I have this particular one. In fact, I'm using it as we speak now. This one is perfect for document editing. So this is a trackball mouse where the mouse stays still and you just use your thumb to move the cursor around. So if you're document editing or you have a really small desk, you only place it there once. And instead of having to move your whole hand, you just move your thumb a little bit. And you can go across the screen and do whatever you want. Again, I use I use this a lot for document editing. You know, writing up receipts. You know, writing up a report. Uh, it's perfect for that because you actually have a lot of control. You can go here. You know, scroll all the way down here. You can select something exactly to you want. You know, you, I wouldn't use it for gaming, which I have. You know, and it's an interesting case when you're playing Rainbow Six Siege. But again, you know, that's besides the point. Also, a lot of um 
uh, m mice have these buttons that you could use either to scroll up or as I did I went back here to a better photo as it loads up now you can you know have it you know go backwards or forwards or if you're playing a game you could have it set to you know like throw an object or grab something you know again since these don't move you're only moving the the little ball if you have a small desk or you're kind of in a confined space this is also perfect for that so then we have um some more fancier ones uh this is the apple magic mouse this one actually uses bluetooth to connect to the computer and this one is like a trackpad in a way where you can you know use your gestures and swipe and click kind of like a trackpad on a on a laptop uh this one's pretty cool um these are expensive you know because there's a lot of things packed into it another thing you could do is buy a trackpad itself some people like trackpads uh, i only find trackpads useful when you're on a laptop but you know when i'm actually sitting in front of a desk like to me it makes more sense to have an actual mice than another one and then finally here you have this ergonomic one i used to have one of these mine in particular wasn't very expensive from some no-name company and these, at least from my experience, these tend to be, fr they are really comfortable. And again, you could actually, and I even used it for gaming a little bit. They're really comfortable, especially for long extended periods. And again, you have the buttons to, you know, move around and help you out. But these tend to be very fragile. I dropped mine by accident at waist height. And I kid you not, it was dusted like Thanos snapped his fingers. So, again, these, you know... They tend to be fragile, but they're really good and they're really comfortable. I would totally recommend it. And um, in terms of these can also have lights as well for the gaming. You know, the lights don't really do much for you except help you know where your computer mice is and if you're in a really dark area. So that's about it for the computer uh, mouse and keyboard, your most common ways you interact with your computer. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you